cool, cool. I'm going to go over something with you that uh, is going to be a pretty big cheat code for the market. And I have my notes somewhere. Right over here. I think you may have heard me reference the composite index before. And if you haven't, the composite index, if you want to, you know, be in the now with uh, your technical analysis friends, <laughs> tell them that they should not use the RSI anymore, that they should use the uh, composite index. All right. The reason for that is that the composite index, I might want to pull it up here. I'm having a Monday as well. <laughs> and there we go. Okay. This is from Constance Brown's um, uh, to get her uh, the masters in whatever it is, I forget. But uh, the relative strength index has an issue. Okay, it it does not develop divergences against long periods of of uh, price data. Okay, it, it it doesn't do a very good job of it. It doesn't display some divergence signals uh, against certain price moves. It just is not as effective as it could be. And that's not Wells Wilder's fault. Uh, he developed probably one of the most important technical tools in existence, the RSI, and it's still used a lot. And the composite index is, is a relatively new, uh, uh, I mean, this is, just, this is just kind of proof of people who practice something and have shown it to be effective, it doesn't become part of academia until much later. The composite index is one of those. Just put this in perspective. Technical analysis is still a really, really new field. I mean, we're talking only like what thirty years, if you want to get, if you want to be gracious, um, as, as as a field that's that's gotten, you know, a lot more respect in the financial industry. It's a technical analysis is a new field, and the the Ichimoku system is older than World War II, and that just got into American markets back in the. Uh, early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, the Ichimoku system came to the West from Japan. The composite index is a very new one uh, as well. I think she, uh, I think she, she finished, she got it done in the 80s, <coughs> but it, it really didn't become, it's a standard indicator in Bloomberg, but it's, it's not everywhere else. And what that, essentially what we have with the composite index is it has a momentum calculation within it to make the RSI more effective. So the composite index has a momentum component that makes it catch divergences, not only in price, but against the RSI. So you actually use the RSI and the composite index to identify divergences within these two oscillators, okay? We're gonna do that right now. We're gonna try and spot some. So again, this is, this is really cool stuff. You, you you won't get this anywhere else. And the composite index is available on TradingView. Um, if you t but you can't type in composite index, you won't get the right one. It's Constance Brown, Let's type in Constance. And this is the one you want from Lazy Bear. <clears throat> Constance Brown composite index. composite index. That's right here, that's the one you want. And then this is just regular RSI. Uh, I put the, I added these EMAs onto the RSI, um, but, but that's, I'll just hide those for now. And actually we can hide the, the, uh, other averages here too. So now we're just left with the composite index and the RSI. And you can tell that, that, you know, for the most part, they do look pretty similar, right? But there are times when they don't. And that's what we really want to spot. For instance, this one's sitting out here 
staring at me. We have a, uh, a lower high in the composite in the composite index. And then we have a higher low, or sorry, a higher high in the RSI and a lower high in the composite index. This is bearish divergence, regular bearish divergence. Is anybody here uh, unfamiliar with uh, 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 divergences? It's it's okay if you're if if you're not familiar with them, that's perfectly fine because this that this it's not something you really uh, see a lot of. Like people will talk about divergences in the moving average, convergence, divergence. Don't use the MACD. Ugh. Technical analysis has has leapt forward significantly since the. Um, the uh, MACD. Okay. Bullish divergence. Quick little crash course. Let's use the RSI. Bullish divergence occurs near the end of some type of down move. And it's when you see prices <clears throat> where there's a uh, sorry, I was talking about bearish divergence in the last chart, not bullish divergence. Bullish divergence happens when you have a lower low in price and a higher low in the oscillator. So if we if we look right here, this is an example of, of bullish divergence, regular bullish divergence. So right here we see that we have lower lows in price, but higher lows in our oscillator. See that? That's a divergence. In regular bullish divergence, what this tells us is that there may be a change in the trend. Okay, it turns a lagging indicator into a leading indicator. Okay. And there's all sorts of methods on when you should take the trade, but divergences themselves are not enough of a signal to 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 take a trade. There's other things you've got to you've, you've got to look for. Um, you know, we'll we'll get to that later, but that's what we're looking for in regular bullish divergence. Bearish divergence is when that's that's what we have here. That's when you have um, a higher high in price. Pretend that the RSI is price. We have a higher high in price and a lower high in the oscillator. That's bearish divergence. So that occurs at the end of an uptrend, and I bet we have one over here, <laughs> which we do at the all-time high. We have a higher high, not a huge difference but it's still there or flat if you have if you have a uh, a flat if you have a double top and a lower high that's still bear, bearish divergence so this is an example of bearish divergence when we have higher high in price and a lower high in the oscillator bearish divergence then there's uh hidden divergence <coughs> and those are used inside a current trend so Hidden divergence is, and, and we're always comparing things highs and highs and highs and lows. Okay, so if we're looking for some type of uh, bearish divergence, we're comparing a high in price and and highs in price and highs in in the oscillator. If we're comparing bearish diver, regular bearish divergence, we're comparing lows against price and low, lows in the oscillator and lows lows in price. Hidden divergence. Um, this doesn't mean that it's like sneaky and hiding from you. It means that it is inside a current trend. So if we're looking for hidden bullish divergence, so hidden bullish divergence should show up during a during a, a bull move. Okay. Why is this acting kind of sheepish? And so what we're looking for in a in hidden bullish divergence is we're looking for higher lows but then in the oscillator we want lower highs and sometimes these ones are a little more difficult to spot lower lows in price but higher lows in the oscillator this is sort of one we have lower lows 
in price, but higher rising lows in the oscillator. That is an example of hidden bullish divergence. Hidden bearish divergence is generally appear during a down move. And, and the thing is with hidden divergence, you really only wanna pay attention to hidden divergences if it's within the trend. So if there's hidden bullish divergences, which, will sh which do show up during a bear move, you really wanna focus only on hidden bearish divergences. So here we have an established downtrend. This is current price action. We're looking for lower highs in price and higher highs in the, in, an, in the oscillator. That is essentially what we've got going here. You could call this a double top even. So we have a double top in these highs, but actually it's lower. And then we have higher highs in our oscillator. So this is hidden bearish divergence. If you ever wonder, you know, when you're trading down and you ever wonder, is this, does something feel like it's just topping out? Like, I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this when you, when you have this big down move and then something starts to trade away from it, starts off pretty good. And then it just feels like, it's not going anywhere like it's like it feels like it peters out or it just kind of loses its momentum that is exactly what is happening it's losing its momentum that's just telling us that the <clears throat> that the uh while there is volume and momentum involved and, and and strength behind the move um it's not being reflected in price so this is hidden hidden divergence which means that you have a continuation of the prior trend, which is down. All right, taking those same principles, we wanna use those when we're looking at the composite index and the RSI, where we treat the RSI like price. So we should actually flip these around. So the RSI is like our chart, like candlesticks, and then the composite index is, is just our oscillator. So. We're looking for divergences between the RSI and the, the uh, composite index. And so this is on the hourly chart. Actually, I should do this on the four hour. More people have been burned using oscillators, like new traders get burned using oscillators all the time, especially ones. So a bounded oscillator is is the RSI, where it only goes between zero and 100. The composite index is is unbounded. Okay, it can go, it goes above 100 and it can go negative. All right. Bounded versus unbounded. So, if I'm looking at the four-hour chart, I want to spot a divergence of some sort. Is there anything right here showing up? <clears throat> uh, no. Let's look over here. Not really. Well, there is sort of right here. This is a lower low and this is a higher low. We'll come back and take a look at these. There's a lower high and a higher high. Obviously something going on here. This is a higher high followed by a lower high. And, and again, you wanna make sure that these are lining up together. So the divergence should be with within, you know, it should, it should be the same here. You can't really extend it down over here. You gotta keep it within the same points. Um, eh. Well, we have, we have some business going on here where we have a lower low in price, but a higher low in oscillator. Again, we're treating the RSI as like a candlestick chart. Very, this is a cool, when you get a triple, these are usually, when you get a triple divergence like this, you get triple peaks or triple troughs. That's usually like, that's a, that is like a gift the market just gave you. Because if you see the third one form and you trade the direction uh, uh, of the divergence, you you have a really high probability of that trade working out. I mean, th those are money makers, especially on longer term charts like daily, weekly, and, and monthly. I mean, triple, they're, they're great. So let's just take a look at these for right now and, and bring this back to price. But I don't want to use that chart I want to use.
Ah, shit, I gotta use that chart. I can get rid of it. Oh, mother fracker. Just wanna hide him. Okay. Wait, where did all my drawings go? Damn it, that's right. No, what did I do? <laughs> Shite. Did I just pull a stupid? I think I might have pulled a stupid. Damn it. That cannot be right. Well, hell. Fudge. All right. We'll just do it again. <laughs> Lower high, higher high. Lower high. Oh, no, that's all right. Uh, let's see. Lows here. Well, that's one, two. Higher low, sorry, sorry, higher high, lower high. Um, higher low, lower low. Uh, got some peaks here, lower highs, flat to higher highs. And Almost done. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know what the hell I did. Got uh, peaks there, peaks there. Mm -hmm. Once you practice looking for divergences, they, they get easier and easier to spot. Well, we have a flat there. Followed by a higher high here. And higher high, lower high. All right, let's take those for now. So then we want to look at our chart. And see how prices responded. So looking at this area here, this is telling us that we had a, this is regular bullish divergence. Where we have the, well, it doesn't look like it from here. Oh, yeah, double bottom followed by higher high tells us that there's bullish activity on this one. So we did see prices trade up. Look over here, regular bearish divergence. As we got to here, did it trade down? Yes, it did. Prices moved down. We have regular bearish divergence, higher highs in the RSI, lower highs in the composite index. See prices, what did they do? Kind of traded flat, then, then moved down. Higher high, lower high, fall down. Then we had this activity here where we encountered regular bullish divergence, lower high in the RSI, higher high, so, sorry, lower lows in the RSI, higher lows in the composite index that yielded rising prices. Um, I mean, it's uh, divergences in the RSI and the composite index are going to be very, very awesome tools in your trading. And, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you won't find people doing this or talking about this. You know, not, not, um, I mean, this, this is really a, a great, because, because people who trade who are new get introduced to the RSI and the MACD. Those are out of the two indicators that are used the most, even by a lot of professionals, it's the RSI and the MACD. But Constance Brown and a lot of other uh, technical analysts, they recognize that the RSI has a really 
uh, it's very, very limited. It does not account for long stretches and, and doesn't account for momentum. The composite index does, okay? The RSI is like Windows 3.0. The composite index is like Windows 10. That's what we're talking about. And what's fascinating about this too is this is also kind of a mind game. It's also like a psychological tool because a lot of the times when you're spotting these divergences, especially especially when you're getting into situations where you see prices are, are um, trying to find an example here of looking for an extreme. <clears throat> okay, so you've got traders who are trying to automatically go long because we're in an oversold condition, which things can remain oversold for quite a while. That's what we're looking for. Was this, what's the value here? This is 21. Oh, that's not right. Can't use that one. It's like the minute I want to find an example, then I'm just not seeing one. Another thing that you can do with the RSI and the composite index is identify similar peaks and troughs. We'll use a Litecoin for this one maybe. Or a, yeah, we'll use Ethereum. How about Ethereum? Oh shit, I wasn't using Ethereum. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the issue. Oh, shit. Oh, being a little stupid. Okay, let's just check these out quick. But triple bearish divergence, higher high in the RSI, three lower highs in the composite index, big drop in price. See that? We had a little bullish divergence happen here, a little bit of relief. Didn't happen. Um, You will spot a lot of flags and pennants will form divergences. Uh, we had higher highs, higher lows in the, um, higher lows in price here, but lower highs in the oscillator means that that is hidden bullish divergence. So did prices move higher? Yes, they did. Zippity doo da over here. Okay, and this is current price action. All right. One of the other things that you can do, and I encourage everybody to do this. Oops. When you get the R sign, the composite index on your chart, move them up, squ squeeze that chart so that you can't see it. I bet TradingView does not like me doing that because it's trying to fit all this into that little area. Uh, cryptocurrency. Kraken. All right. Look for similar deep troughs and peaks. All right. Forex lens, folks, this is familiar to you. We've done this before. So we've got a peak there, a peak there. Okay, two similar kinds of peaks. That's what we're looking for. Same here. Mm, yeah, maybe. trough here this will also help you spot divergences as you're going along through these because they'll they'll trigger for you you'll just you'll just kind of spot them that way it's like oh okay this looks like this one's moving down but this one looks like it's moving up good to pay attention to those you've got probably assume safely that prices fell down from here Okay. All right. So then we can squeeze them back down. And look and see how prices responded. 
We did travel up a little bit, but then that bearish, here's that regular bearish divergence. We had the higher highs in the RSI, lower highs in the composite index. I mean, the RSI did not spot that divergence, okay? Notice how the RSI was, I mean, as we painted a higher high here, the RSI did it as well. The composite index caught the divergence. It catches things the RSI can't. It's not that it won't catch things, it's just that it can't catch the things that the composite index does. Let's look over here. We have the extreme values here. Little bit of buying pressure before falling down again. Over here, see we have extremes in the RSI, similar peak shape in the composite index. Did see selling pressure happen there, selling pressure here. And similar there, uh, we had one right here too. Okay. Oh, see right now in Ethereum, we have divergence currently happening right now live we have a higher low in the rsi and a lower low in the composite index that is regular or sorry that is hidden bullish divergence and on the four hour chart this is a long enough move where we can consider this to be a minor uptrend even though you know, on a broad look here, we could be this could be considered just part of a large bear flag, but the, the length of time this has spent going up, um, we, we could consider this to be part of a, a bull move. And so there's hidden divergence on the four hour, which tells us that, yeah, in real time, divergences are not easy. They're really easy to spot like a post, post action. But currently we do have one and this is tradable. Uh, compare that against um, like market geometry or the, oh wait. So if I compare, let's just, you know, we know that there's that divergence in here. Let me squeeze these down a little bit. When I compare this to the market geometry, this is a screaming buy. Why? Because this, this minor 2 8 harmonic and this 45 degree angle right here, this is a strong, strong support zone, followed by the fact that we closed two candles above the 4 8 minor harmonic. This is just a very, and, and uh, the, the, the circle here in this, in this geometry acted as a support zone as well so the fact that we had this hidden bullish divergence form on this geometry is kind of like a a, a dub big red truck to trade it the only reason that the trade is valid is because the again the divergence the bull the hidden bullish divergence itself is not enough of a condition to to uh to go long you have to find other confirming pieces of uh, uh, analysis. So this is what I'm seeing. And uh, I have an arrow pointing towards a breakout zone. I, I would expect us to get uh, probably to the 240-ish by the third, probably higher. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how prices respond starting because it's October, new month. If we take a look at the Ichimoku system, that's the dollar index. Let's look at Ethereum.
Here's the four hour chart to the top right. Oh, hell yeah. That, that hidden bullish divergence that we looked at in those oscillators. Oh, this is a screaming buy. Uh, let, I mean, let's just look at this chart. We can put the Ichimoku system onto this four hour chart. Hide all the drawing tools. We know that there's hidden bullish divergence right here as we're, as we're speaking. And yeah, support found on the baseline and the, the top of the cloud. Yup, that and we're forming a, uh, looks like we could be forming a bullish pivot here. The two outside candlesticks are, have higher lows and higher highs than the center. We would ideally close above the, the open and the close of the prior. We'll see if volume can step in to propel it higher from here, but definitely this is looking like a bullish trade. Ooh. Okay, sorry about that. Turn my phone down. Okay, so that in that, this example, it's pretty pretty nice that we had this this show up here. Um, usually, you wait for the close. I mean, what does it look like on the hourly? Oh, we're back above those on the hour. That's pretty good. F flat bottom followed by a rising. Uh, yeah, it's hidden bullish divergence on the one hour as well. So yeah, those are good signs. Perfect. Okay. There was one other thing I wanted to go over. Shoot. Oh. Let's look at some trades on the Ichimoku. Um, Ethereum, this is pretty healthy looking. Uh, uh, that we have, I mean, it's actually not the greatest setup here on the daily. This looks pretty bearish as far as just candlestick pattern. However, prices have maintained above the conversion and the baseline. They've they've closed above this now for if we if we close the day out above the conversion and the base, that's a good sign. There's a TK cross. When that happens on a daily chart, especially if it's been such a long time since we had that happen the last time. It's a pretty good sign that you see a, a good a good drive and a good push up. The four hour chart, we could be entering a really nice long opportunity on the four hour. You know, all the other conditions are met for going long on the four hour chart for Ethereum. We just need the lagging span to get out of the cloud, and that would be at around the 236 zone. So I'll put that out there. Okay, and then we've got a 60 minute chart. Yeah, we're all right there. Check out Cardano. Cardano, yeah, really nice daily right there. Four hour chart, pretty similar setup to what we just saw with Ethereum. The hourly is a little bit more forgiving. Uh, at, uh, zero at 087. I remember what I wanted to point out because TradingView just got this like last week or two weeks ago. If you are a person who has, uh, actually everybody does, I think. Everybody has a certain direction that they're more comfortable trading. You have like an internal bias where you feel okay going long versus short. Some people who are, you know, pessimists, they they, they definitely feel more comfortable going short than long. I, I fall into that category for some instruments. Um, and in general, I think I'm more comfortable shorting than I am taking a long trade. But how you can help yourself is 
is by flipping a chart upside down. Okay, so if you're like a permanent bear, okay, if you're if you're constantly bearish and you look at this chart and you think, okay, well, there's easy breakdowns here that I could take a, a, sh a short trade on. Now in trading view, if you right click over here on the price scale, you can go to, um, where's that? Oh, here it is, invert scale. Right click on the price scale and go to invert scale. And now you see it's the same chart just flipped upside down. All right, so you know, if I see, if I'm somebody who is more comfortable going short than long, then I'm looking for a trade here on the one hour chart for Ethereum where, you know, I see the lagging span break below price here and price break below the cloud. That's a short trade. Uh, but in reality, that I would be taking a long. Very, very common in a lot of software. But this is something that uh, a lot that, that's something that a lot of old school traders would do. <clears throat> I do it in my Optima software all the time. I'm always flipping charts upside down. Uh, okay, back here. Uh, let's see. Basic attention token was actually kind of outperforming for a little while there. Basic attention token kind of stuck here on the hourly, stuck here on the four hour. The, oh, it moved down there on the daily. That's actually a really good sign. I mean, I'd be long out based on the daily above the, on a close above the baseline. Of this prior base at 2681 uh, EOS Could be a short, although the market is so heavily correlated, you got to be careful of that. EOS on the daily, EOS on the four hour, and the one hour. Hmm. Man, that, look at this daily chart. <laughs> look at the shadows and wicks. This is. <laughs> Wow, it's like all over the place. I mean, there's better things to look at. IOTA. Breakout on the hourly would be pretty, pretty awesome. Breakout on the daily looks, looks kind of bearish. Yeah, let's see how they, Nano. Kind of bucking the trend a little bit. Not much. Geez, look at this. <laughs> Ever since December 25th, look at this flat distribution here. I and mean, this is the, the the price range here is just. I don't know how you can get any more tighter. It's just really, really constricted. Daily, man, look at that. <laughs> well, the daily trade is actually pretty easy to spot here. I mean, the condition where the lagging span be above price and price above the cloud is pretty much the same at 4182 i know i've got <laughs> i have some trades sitting up there actually I have some resting orders uh 40 uh, 40 i'll make sure i got that price right 4382 that's right Okay, Nano did that. Waves. Man, I'm disappointed with Waves. 
No. Never mind. Walton Chain. Same thing. ZRX and the others here. Everything's got a tight range. <laughs> it, it's not. It's not showing a lot of movement, but it's also it's not, it's not showing a lot of selling off. Mondays are are ha have generally been kind of yucky days. Uh, you know they are. If we look at Bitcoin, go to a daily chart, and. Uh, let's go to, oh, let's see here. Either calendar. You know what? I'll wait for tomorrow because we're already past our time. Got trade ideas in, did some education. Cool. Awesome. Good. Uh, folks, this is a continuing to constrict zone. We are, we are in the, the, the expansion month. The historical seasonal expansion month for Bitcoin, and then we get into the crazy month getting into November. But we're again, we've been talking about this for a couple months now. Um, don't miss the bus, okay? Don't miss the bus, but trade smart, trade wisely. Um, Anyways, uh, yeah, you guys have a good rest of your day. Have a great Monday. Uh, Forks Lens, folks, I'll see you in the morning. Uh, the rest of you I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.